Hello viewers, this is Dr. Sarva Chaudhary from Australian Polyclinic. We're going to talk about the exercise uh, and how our breathing adjusts to exercise and what happens uh, when we uh, train to improve our endurance. Okay, uh, first it's important to understand uh, the difference value of exercise. Uh, we can classify exercise into three different grades, moderate, severe and heavy exercise. In moderate uh, exercise, we do not produce any lactic acid or lactate while we're exercising. So we do not really get muscle cramps for that sake. And we are using oxygen for all our energy production. The examples are uh, in a moderate walk uh, or you know, very light jogging. In uh, case of uh, heavy exercise, uh, we uh, increase our muscle activity so much that uh, the lactic acid or lactate is produced from the muscle but it, its levels are only minimally raised and they remain stable as we continue to exercise and depending on the fitness of the person one can tolerate the, the level of lactate for a fair while while we continue to exercise in uh, you know severe or you know a severe exercise capacity or in severe exercise, we produce lactate, which continues to increase with time. What happens is, uh, as it builds up in the muscles, the muscle become fatigued. It make your brain, uh, it make it send a signal to the brain to breathe harder, and that hyperventilation. You can also feel that. So in this uh, severe category, people cannot continue to exercise uh, much longer, and they need to stop. Uh, to uh, to utilize or get rid of uh, lactate. Uh, before we go further, there are a few terms I would like to introduce and explain. Uh, one is called uh, anaerobic threshold or AT. People uh, who are exercise uh, physiologists um, uh, or you know they want to know about exercise, uh, they are very well aware of uh, this term. Uh, anaerobic threshold or AT. It is at that point when we start producing lactate while we are doing exercise. Uh, beyond which, um, uh, you know, your oxygen delivery is not matching with the requirement and, and hence energy production is dependent on anaerobic methods. Uh, not having oxygen for energy production is basically anaerobic. So this anaerobic threshold also demonstrates how, uh, how much a person is uh, fit. Other thing, a very similar, con uh, top, uh, you know, another uh, concept I would like to introduce now is basal metabolic rate. Basal me metabolic rate is uh, in the amount of energy that our body need or utilize at rest while we're not exercising. So, and this type of uh, basal metabolic rate uh, energy is produced entirely with the oxygen help. Uh, another topic uh, or term is the VO2 max, which many people may have heard of. A VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen that our body can utilize while we are breathing, while we exercise as hard as possible. Uh, this is a, a direct relation, uh, has a direct relationship with uh, your ex fitness, physical fitness. So when we exercise, there are few changes happening in our body. And uh, it is important to understand those changes, what is happening in our breathing, in our muscles, in our heart to, to, uh, to help understand and then also do some changes in your routine and exercise to improve your endurance, which is our long-term uh, goal. Um, and so first of all, I may talk a little bit about oxygen delivery. Uh, as uh, the muscle exercise, they use uh, oxygen. At rest, uh, you know, you may know that our oxygen saturation is like about 95% plus to 100% in different people. And uh, when it goes through the tissue, there's still a little bit of oxygen left uh, while the blood returns from the muscles, uh, which is about 70%, which we call the mixed venous uh, oxygen. So when we exercise, our muscles tend to extract more oxygen from the arterial blood and the uh, oxygen that may be coming out from the muscle may be as low as 20% uh, percent as compared to 70% at rest. So more oxygen is taken per unit of blood flow through the muscles. 
so that's uh, extraction. Other thing is even muscles exercising, their blood vessels also open up and there's more blood flow by unit of muscle bulk is also happening. As we continue to exercise, uh, uh, we uh, using aerobic uh, mechanism to produce energy, but once we reach the anaerobic level, uh, our oxygen demands can't be met in the muscle level. So what we uh, have is anaerobic method where we're producing lactate. So lactate requires oxygen to be metabolized and get rid of from the body. So overall, we develop what we call oxygen depth as we exercise. Uh, people who train uh, hard, they can build up higher oxygen depth, which they repay while they recover from exercise. And that's one of the reasons you may have noticed that your heart rate may stay a little higher once you even finish your exercise and along with your breathing rate. Uh, other, other you, know, uh, you know, changes that happen when we exercise are uh, in the long run are changes in the muscle where the muscle bulk is increased, uh, the mitochondria which are energy producing uh, uh, power plant in our muscles, uh, their number and density also improve the extraction improves, the, you know, the vascularity of blood vessels improve through the muscles and overall idea is to get more oxygen running, uh, more blood running through the muscles uh, and you know, taking oxygen with it. Also, uh, the heart uh, work is improved where we increase the amount of uh, pumping of the heart and the heart rate uh, generally as we continue to train tend to continue to go down so when we exercise it can even uh, peak and you have got a bigger amount of uh, uh, blood coming per stroke of heart so overall cardiac output is improved that way it is surprising that actually we do not improve our ventilation capacity with the exercise uh, what is ventilation capacity is the total amount of air that you breathe maximum uh, in in a person it's called minute ventilation to your maximum breathing capacity one is born with the maximum breathing capacity in a way which may change a little bit as we age but it doesn't you cannot really improve maximum breathing capacity the only thing though you can do is with your breathing is uh, you can train your respiratory muscles and so they don't get fatigued and you can breathe for longer with the same um, uh, ventilatory capacity uh, and if you are not trained uh, you can get fatigue in the muscle and you continue to hyperventilate and you feel more breathless so this is uh, what I'm going to talk about today to introduce these uh, terms and uh, in the next uh, blog I'm going to uh, explain how as a cyclist or any exercise enthusiast uh, we can improve our cardio respiratory uh, fitness if you are interested please subscribe to our channel and uh, i will upload uh, the other video very soon have a good one